Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Chris and thank you for checking out this video. Today I want to talk to you about a practice routine that I've discovered in the last couple of weeks that has really unlocked my guitar solos when I'm practicing my phrasing and coming up with melodic ideas and interesting ways to solo over music. Now if you're interested in developing your skills as a lead guitarist there are countless videos and advice and teachings out there of how you should be going about developing that area of your playing. You're always told to practice your scales, your arpeggios, learn all of your triads, and that's all very well and good, but it's how you implement those techniques that give you your own voice as a guitar player. Now before I dive deeper into this video, I just want to take a minute to encourage you guys to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and if you find this video useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel in these early days. So guys, let's talk about this practice routine. So it's super simple and whether you have a MIDI keyboard or a loop pedal, as long as you've got some way to record a sound, then you'll be able to implement this really, really easily. Now in the piece that I played at the start, I recorded a simple C based chord using my MIDI keyboard and I just looped that in Logic. Now, if you have a loop pedal, then you can pretty much do the same. And then I basically did a solo over the top. Now, it's not really so much a solo, it's more just kind of exploring ideas melodically, using a foundational chord tone to base your note choice from. Now this idea of kind of creating a chordal drone is something that's really popular in ambient styles of music because it really is immersive and it's the perfect blank canvas to explore. So when you are looking to practice this, what are the main things that we're going to be focusing on and how are we going to get the most out of our time implementing this routine? So the key aspect is trying to make our lead guitar playing sound interesting when we're limited to just one chord. It's gonna make us really focus on the nuances in our playing, in our techniques, and our vocabulary in terms of our phrasing, our licks, and the notes that we know on the guitar and how we normally play them. So the first thing that is a great kind of starting point when looking at how to approach soloing over something like this is that idea of phrasing. Now in sort of traditional song-based soloing, Often chords are going to modulate, so what that means is that the chords are going to change every few bars. So, for example, you could have a 1-4-5 progression, which is really, really popular. It's popular in all kinds of music, so if we are in the key of C, then your 1 chord would be C, your 4 chord would be F, and then your 5 chord would be G. And because we're so familiar with that chord progression, we've probably got licks and, you know, riffs that we know that we pretty much play to join those chords together. And it almost just becomes like muscle memory. We don't even really think about it. We just know that when we hear those three chords in a progression, and instantly we just think of the licks that we know and we associate it with that progression that we're so familiar with. But what this routine does is it just takes that familiarity away because this time we only have one chord to focus on. So how are we gonna make it interesting? And this is where phrasing becomes really, really important because how you choose to play the notes is gonna be key to creating that interest. In the piece that I played, I was playing predominantly in C major and I was just basically using the major scale pretty much exclusively in everything that I was playing. But I was thinking about it in different ways. I was trying to combine different um, licks and different ideas within the scale, putting different combinations of notes together, and basically coming up with as many different variations on how to play certain combinations of notes as possible. 
This is the crux of phrasing, and this is why phrasing is so important, because it creates so much colour and texture in what we play. Just being able to draw upon all of these different phrases as often as possible is just going to help you so much in the long run when you're thinking about creating, you know, guitar solos and you're being melodic. I did a previous video on melodic guitar soloing where I talk about phrasing um, a little bit more, so make sure to go and check that out. Another really, really important part of my playing, and I can't quite stress how important this is for me, uh, and that is the idea of dynamics. Now, dynamics is what's going to kind of create the sort of light and shade in your playing. It's how you can really help emphasize certain parts of your solo. It helps create that arc, basically. And what we want to do when we're soloing is we want to be able to tell a story. And this dynamic approach is going to be absolutely crucial. It's really a case of being cognizant of that when you're playing. So when you're incorporating the phrases that we were talking about earlier, Really, how you would choose to kind of attack those phrases is again just going to add that extra dimension to what you play. Now another reason that I think this routine is really perfect for kind of, I guess, unlocking inspiration and creativity, and more importantly helping you create your own voice as a guitarist, is that it can be a real machine for inspiration. In the piece that I played at the start, I was using a Strymon Flint pedal to create a pretty large reverb sound. I used the 70s setting with quite a high mix, quite a high um, decay time, just to get really kind of immersive. I find those kind of tones really, really inspiring because they become real kind of personalities in themselves. All of the great guitar players that we all, you know, look up to and respect and admire you know, you can all pick them out of a lineup, even if you can't physically see them playing, if you were to just listen to one of their records without someone telling you who it was, you can pick up, you know, certain inflections that certain guitarists have on, you know, their tone or the way they play. And this kind of routine is going to force you to start kind of carving your own tone um, as you, you know, practice over this progression. On the one hand, it's really limiting because you have one chord, but on the other hand, it's really freeing because you've got so many possibilities. So just experiment with different guitar sounds, you know, try combinations of pedals that you wouldn't normally, and really just kind of go down the rabbit hole of exploring the possibilities of, you know, tone with the equipment that you have. Because normally when we're playing with over songs or over backing tracks, we're thinking too much about what's coming next, whether that's the song, whether that's the progression, you know, whether it's something that is kind of familiar that we latch onto. You know, we've all played over our favorite guitar solos from, you know, all the greats that we respect. And quite often you just become the kind of person that wants to just emulate that sound and you want to chase the tone of the people who have kind of influenced you. And, you know, that's great. We've all done that. But I think it's really important to kind of put your own stamp on your own playing and just be yourself more importantly. And having something that is so neutral, that has no kind of influence from anybody else, is going to make you really, really individual and unique in terms of how you approach that. And the best thing of all of this technique is that you are the boss. You are in control of what you play. With backing tracks that have been recorded or with songs, you know, you're kind of playing within a box that somebody else has kind of created for you. And whilst you can take, you know, things that we know from music theory, from scales, you know, triads, arpeggios, and we can implement that onto somebody else's music, it's great for you to be in control of how you want to practice that. So the joy of kind of creating these drones or these kind of, you know, soundscapes of just one particular chord voicing, it means you can choose the voicing for whatever chord it is that you want to play. If you adapt this into your practice routine, when you eventually, or when we all eventually are able to play with other people again, other musicians, or if you're looking to, you know, record with people, because you'll have focused, you know, so much on all the possibilities of things that you can play over a C major chord. So if it's a one, four, five in C, you basically know all the combinations of notes, all the phrases, you know, all the dynamics that work really well over a one chord and then that is something that then you can adapt to your four chord and your five chord and then it's just kind of bridging those gaps and stitching those things together it's basically just expanding your vocabulary as a guitar player because you don't want to get stuck in a rut you don't want to be playing the same kind of things over the same chords in the same progressions you want to be able to keep people on their toes a little bit you know 
What are you going to play next? What's coming in the next bar? What are you going to play over the five chord? There are some great guitar players such as Josh Smith, Ariel Posen, all these guys, they could take a four minute solo and sometimes they don't play the same lick twice. You know, they have such a knowledge of the fretboard and such a wide vocabulary that really they are free on the instrument. And that's pretty much what we want to get to. So really getting immersed in sort of chordal tonality, which is quite one dimensional, it gives you the freedom to basically add all the color to that and really just make it as interesting as possible. It'll be great to hear in the comments below how you get on with this. And if you do have any practice routines that you do on a regular basis that you think other people might find valuable, then let us know in the comments as well. Just share the knowledge. I'm gonna try and do the same. If I come up with more of these, then I will be sure to make a short video on them, just because I think it's a really quick way to develop, and it's definitely helped me develop quickly as a lead guitarist. As always, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Thanks for watching. If you got to this point, you are awesome. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Until then, keep playing guitar and stay safe out there.